Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another model video covering airbrushing. After two years of reviewing and testing the APR 150 battery powered cordless airbrush, I thought it'd be ideal to revisit the old model again and see how it stands up after quite a bit of use and storage. It's a bit unfair with a battery powered component and parts that do seem to perish over time such as lithium batteries that they do need to be fairly revisited with appropriate charging and operation. An afternoon, a few days to a week testing doesn't really outline or signify a decent product or not for purchasing. First this boxing here is a brand new model altogether and we're going to have a quick rundown of what's included and how it works. We have included a large aluminium cylinder with a small built-in pump and a large lithium battery that connects via USB to a computer or power source. It has a operational capacity of 30 minutes constant spraying. You can turn it on and off as you're not using it and it attaches on top by a 1 8 inch threaded connector, a generic 0.3 mil airbrush which I've extensively used in the past. The box also has the cables, a wrench and an eyedropper. Manufactured in China and bought on the likes of eBay, Amazon or AliExpress, this is not a name brand or premium product, but a bunch of existing technologies tacked together to make a fairly effective, very portable device, which I thought at the time was a gimmick. The attractive aspect is it's a very low price of anywhere between 25 to 60 US dollars retail and fairly available and easy to acquire even via shipping. The airbrush which we are cleaning up and pulling apart in the footage above is proven to be fairly useful and operates quite competitively with name brand and main airbrushes. Well maintained, the nozzle cleaned out regularly and replaced if 0.3 and lubricated inside will have a very smooth and precise performance. You can get parts from the Hysing and H series airbrush needles and nozzles threads which fits on this model quite well. It's very light to hold in the hand. Unfortunately it does not have the bottom mounting valve for turning the air on and off via the above trigger switch. This can be bought separately, a hose as well and attach to the compressor if you desire so. Needle condition can be visualized by looking with the cap off. If it protrudes by one mil it's good. Anything else will need replacing, especially splits. Also make sure the needle nut is tight and the cap at the front. We'll get to the cap crown very shortly. The model we are maintaining, cleaning and using here is the same airbrush compressor from two years ago. It's a bit worn. I would recommend for beginners who are using pre-thinned paint to switch to a 0.5 needle and nozzle in ease of cleaning and spraying. With the aluminium airbrush, it has a very strange misalignment issue at the crown cap end, the nozzle and the needle. It may not have the best atomization and spray pattern. By closing this cap absolutely fully, you'll have restricted flow sometimes. By twisting it quarter of a turn open, I found flow to be far superior and improved, and opening it further than that completely obstructs the airway and will bubble through the cup. I like after cleaning to tighten the crown and open it a quarter for best performance. I keep the cap reasonably clean as dry drip does occur where paint builds up in the cap. The current spray test is still using a 0.3 needle and nozzle. Everything is clean and tuned and I've put in a automotive grade filler primer which is renowned for clogging airbrushes regardless of PSI or compressor. You can see with this footage it is spraying especially well. Many online complaints of no output or sputtering seems to be more of a user error issue. 
I'm also a proficient low PSI sprayer, preferring anywhere between 10 to 15 PSI, which gives me a lot of flexibility. Moving on to a standard hobby paint, Tamir acrylic thinned with lacquer thinner, I did a 50-50 ratio mix, which started off a slight flow issue due to not mixing the paint correctly in the cup. External mixes is ideal. As flow improved, I was able to get very basic lines and gradients. On this second page, improving the thinning ratio two to three parts thinner to one part paint for a much higher viscosity i was able to get very beautiful and free flowing lines as thin as i desired and a fair amount of control and excellent gradients turning the compressor on and off which is a bit awkward for a little while and very heavy on the hand will extend your operation time quite a bit and again you can still add this and operate it added to a power bank charger or a usb cable being very vigilant in charging in the battery after use and keeping it fully charged will not deplete the life and again during this time I still get a full 30 minutes or more operation life regardless of how used. I've never experienced any overheating or operation issues and constantly pounding on the button has not caused a connection issue and is fairly stable. If you remember when I initially bought this airbrush, the first model was faulty and needed to be returned, though I've decided to sell this line in my hobby shop and have had about 10 of these past my hands, each of them being pretty effective and fully operational with no complaints from customers. In the past year, I have furthered my mastery in the viscosities of paints and decided to spray in much thinner bouts, slower and more gentle and I found this airbrush to be far more useful and exciting to use nowadays. Picking it up quite recently during the lockdown I had to relocate for a couple of months and wish to continue building and modeling. I had to use this airbrush for quite a while and going from straight color in painting to gradients and fancy color schemes shading and freehand camouflage i was able to rapidly improve with this airbrush and in the end get the same standards of finish as my regular home rig finish these 10 models during that time in isolation and lockdown I still stand by that this is a fantastic airbrush assembly and a portable nature makes it quite attractive as a secondary setup or maybe a prime setup for a beginner. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll see you all later.